us. What's Dude. happening, my friends? What's going on? How are we doing today? The Still Oscars ever. charts, the billboards <laughs> yeah. charts, move yeah. over Meryl Streep. Yeah. Travis Insider is here. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, now it's a party. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I got Wait. questions all yeah. day about cannabis. You know what I told them? What'd you Don't tell go them? to the right show. Go to Cannabis Insider. They'll, <laughs> they'll be for you there. So Mitch uh, is, I, I know there's Mitch some people Spencer waiting for the you. Men. This is great. This is great. Thanks for teeing that up, fellas. That's awesome. And thanks for I, I was just I was just listening to that last bit. That was awesome. How are you, Javi? I am doing pretty pretty good. Honestly, it's been a good start to the week. What about you? About the same, man. About the same. It's beautiful weather here in Michigan today. It's like 65, 66 degrees. Ooh. So my God, it is like sun's out, guns out over here, is what it feels That's like. It's awesome. Finally, yeah. finally, Michigan realized spring is here. Yes, thankfully, thankfully. Um, Less than a month away from 420, and I think it's time for our introduction. Let's do it. Roll it. All right, all right. We're back. Back in action. Javi, I've got a few things um, yep. for you Shoot. today. And guys in the chat, throw a one in there if, if there is any excitement whatsoever about all the acquisitions going on in the space. Um, a two if you just don't care about acquisitions and you don't. <laughs> but um, I'm excited. I feel like every day there's something else that happens that's really interesting. Now, why don't we start with this one, Javi? I am cannabis. I am cannabis. I know we talked about this one a little bit last week, um, but this is a cool one. One of the only um, operators, especially the in the, the medical community here, that has a footprint in the EU, Canada, and Israel, right? Yep. Um, and, and Israeli company, in fact, they just got into North America through an acquisition. Yeah, well, I mean, you have to applaud that, right? Because especially in this industry, it certainly seems like the footprint is the the number one thing. It doesn't matter if it's retail or clinics or 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 brands, right? A lot of different ways mm -hmm. to achieve what that footprint looks like. But um, but uh, yeah, you got to applaud those guys. Those are three hefty markets to have a and foothold in. And here's something interesting. It's one of the very few, you know non-North American cannabis companies now acquiring a big footprint or a like some kind of big operation in North America, right? That's we right. haven't seen many Israeli companies get into, into the US. Uh, we haven't seen many European companies get into the US. And in fact, we haven't seen many US companies get into Europe either, right? The, the flow seems, seems to go like Canada to Europe. And that's about it for now. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, and I, I, I love it, right? At, at least there's a, an opportunity to spread the wealth a little bit. Um, we got a yeah. question about CBDD, or maybe it wasn't a question. Maybe it's just a little pumping there. Um, you know, the, the stock's at two cents. Um, they're on the OTC. Looks like a market cap of around uh, just under two million. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What, what's, what's to know about CBDD? We had a few uh, questions about it in the past. CBD of Denver, I believe, is a company. Uh, we are not a fan of small penny stocks. Not to say that that CBDD is or isn't great. They, they, you know, just the level of disclosure for for smaller companies isn't usually massive. Not a lot to go on. Uh, but I think we need to do our homework. So that's the first let's thing. Put, yeah, let's put that one on. We'll 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 look into that one. We'll get back to you. Thank you, Jason, for that one. Um, yeah, go ahead, man. No, not at all. I mean, uh, you know, going back to IMCC for a little bit, I am cannabis, right? You know, we were talking about this acquisition they made. They paid 101 million Canadian dollars to acquire Tricom Financial, right? So that says a lot. Oh, beautiful. We got the chart there. Kind Thank of. you, Aaron. <laughs> kind of the chart there. We'll take it. Uh, so th they started trading on the NASDAQ very recently through a, a SPAC deal. So that's why we don't have so much info or or extremely high volumes yet, just because it's a relatively new stock. 
Uh, and they didn't do much uh, press in the U.S. before before going to the Nasdaq, right? I remember uh, covering the the company on Benzinga every week. They have a good PR team, but they pitched like me and not a lot, of, you know, of other U.S. based or, or Canada based journalists. So you know, there was often not a lot of information around what they were doing. Company definitely a company to keep an eye on. Uh, one of the most interesting players in Israel, especially publicly traded. We don't have a lot of those. There are a lot of very interesting private players in, in Israel, but the, like this is a very, very cool way to play the the Israeli European market, and now you know a a financial play within North America as well. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, well, listen, I have a couple more that I want to rattle off here. IMCC again, great company, great footprint. Let's talk about great companies for a second. Um, do you want to talk about that. True Leave? <laughs> oh, no, we'll get to True Leave. True, we'll get to True Leave. I love talking about True Leave. You know that. But I know. Let's, let's, let's start with Cresco. This is quick news. CRLBF is the ticker. Um, we heard from Bluma Wellness. Their shareholders approved that merger. Um, so, yeah, interesting. Interesting uh, response in the market there. But that is big news for Cresco. They go into the Florida market with that acquisition. So CRLBF is, is that it, ticker. Are you, yeah. And Go what, ahead. What, what, what acquisition is that one? I was thinking of because they acquired some like a psychedelics company as well. It's called um, Hallucenex or Hallucenex Life Sciences. Cresco it's did? It's a Canadian psychedelic assisted by a uh, psychotherapy uh, focused company. Interesting. Focused. I did not hear about that. That's interesting. So that's Cresco Pharma probably. Not the same one as Cresco. No, Labs. yeah, it must be Cresco Labs. Cresco Labs, the big MSO. I, I, yeah, I'd be shocked if they, they jumped into the psychedelic space so soon. So yeah. no, let's not let's not get it twisted. Cresco Labs, C R L B F. That's an acquisition of Bluma Wellness, which puts them in the Florida market. Um, we all heard about their acquisition into the Massachusetts market uh, last week. I think it was about 158 mil or something they spent to jump into Massachusetts vaulting into the top three position in that space. Pretty darn cool. Um, keeping it rolling, VRNO, VRNO, Verano Holdings. Verano Holdings. Here's what I love about this company. They seem to be doing this strategically. In a time, mm -hmm. I don't know what you what you think right now, but at a time when all these SPACs are jumping into like seven markets at a time, right? Verano seems to be growing strategically, right? They just acquired mm -hmm. another business in Arizona to yep. further deepen their presence in that market. Um, but they're going to be huge, right? They, they, yeah. When they went public, they vaulted companies in this space, right? So it's, it's, been, it's been pretty cool to watch them. And the pending, you know, we, we discussed this in the past, but the pending merger with uh, Altmet makes them particularly interesting. And, and, you know, one of the potentially one of the largest cannabis companies in the world. One to keep an eye on, you know, back to today's news. Um, they announced today that they are purchasing Patient Alternative Relief Center for about $17 million. This is a, um, a company in operating in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, and, and the name of the business they're doing business is local joint. Um, again, interesting. And, and, and the, you know, the move just comes on the heels of securing almost a hundred million Canadian, which is 79.5 million us in financing. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, interesting news out of Verano and a lot of news out of Verano. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The chart saying. Yeah. A little tough to read there, but yeah. Um, Another thing here. Um, yeah, let's see the five day. There you go. And the one month. Why are why is the market responding negatively? I don't know. To, Isn't that interesting? Acquisitions, right? Well, like is it also okay? So when was this? This is the okay. So really, on the fifteenth or sixteenth, it started to it started to to drop again. Um, I don't know. Perhaps it was the turn in the market. Maybe we haven't had a full bounce from the Safe Banking Act yet um, and the reintroduction into Congress. But I do expect the market to respond to that. I'd be shocked if it didn't. I mean, ETFs are slightly down today, but you know, for, for specific companies, I'm still a little bit confused. Do you think it's, it's just you know investors 
uh, worried uh, about, uh, you know, exuberant spending coming back to the industry after what we saw a couple of years ago. I don't so, think it's... Why are they uh, not I, rewarding this? Console? Maybe, maybe, but I don't think so. I mean, look at the last question, Beat Street Music. Why did cannabis stocks today, Tilray, due to the firing of White House staff for the past cannabis use, right? Um, so listen, this is interesting. There were several staffers let go from the White House, the Biden administration, um, because of past marijuana use, right? Mm -hmm. Javi, have we heard any more about that? Is there has there been any explanation? Not a lot. I mean, they're bashing, they're bashing, you know, uh, Biden's administration really hard, especially because only a couple of weeks ago he had said he would not do that. And here's the here's the you know the plot twist. Kamala Harris last year said she had consumed cannabis. She said, I consumed it and I inhaled it, you know, so. <laughs> and I inhaled. What, the Bill what, Clinton, you know, I did not inhale or, or <laughs> Al Gore or whoever Obama said Obama said he did inhale and I think it's a thing. It's a presidential thing. That's the way you say it. I, I smoked cannabis, but I inhaled it too. Now, my question is, will he also fire Kamala? You know, like, what's the standard there? You know, wh where do we draw the line? Of course, you won't fire Kamala, but, you know, talks a little bit about a double morale. I don't yeah, know. Well, it makes no sense. It makes no sense. I mean, why would you fire someone if it's, uh, if it was, um, well, if it's legal, especially in, in, in whatever market they're in. And even if it's not, if, if we're legalizing it and decriminalizing it in certain markets and ideally federally, then why should it matter? Right? Um, yeah. Okay, so very interesting. Obviously, we have our own opinions about it, but um, but perhaps perhaps that has had an effect on the market. I'm not sure. Um, certainly, something to think about. Um, Elliot mentions Valens and Chiron having a good start to the week. I saw that too. Um, Valens is an interesting company. This is V L N C F, uh, big in the extraction space. I think well under value in terms of of uh, the relationships this company has in the space um, and how long they've been in the space. I'd be shocked to see mm -hmm. that stock sit at that level uh, a whole lot longer. Right? Um, again, mm -hmm. just my personal opinion, but a dollar eighty seven. Well, they're up here, about eight percent today. Here, that, that is a different response, right? On Friday, they announced they were acquiring a uh, an edibles manufacturer for like twenty million dollars. Life Food Technologies stock stock has been rallying since, right? Yes, yes. Well, they they announced that they were going to do so. What did what did the acquisition close on Friday? Uh, they, they announced on Friday that the, the, they acquire. Yeah, that they you know okay. confirmed the acquisition. So Got it, got it. So it was confirmed. They, 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 had, they had announced it previously. They finalized um, the the purchase on Friday, or at least, you know, they announced it. There's always a little bit, you know, a few days between, uh, well, you know, when things happen and when they press release, right? So they announced they closed the acquisition. That m could have happened on Monday, maybe, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Probably. So, yeah, this market, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense right now. Um, you've got certain, you've got certain companies like, uh, Harvest Health and Recreation, HRVSF, HRVSF. They were at one time the largest cannabis MSO with an acquisition. I forget who they acquired, but it was a massive deal, like an eight or nine hundred million dollar deal. Um, they're up in a, about a percent and a half today. But why? Yeah, I think they just settled a lawsuit, didn't they? Something of that nature. There was some sort of... Um, uh, of settlement that was reached with Falcon International, I think was the name of the group. But um, perhaps we can pull that up. Yeah, I'm not sure. But why should they be up? And Curaleaf, C-U-R-L-F, is down almost a percentage point today, even though they had very positive news last week with their deal with Planet 13, who is up, P-L-N-H-F, up about another 2% today. They're trading at about 672 a share Really, really positive company. Yeah. I mean, um, many of these these companies are not trading up or down on, on specific news, right? It's just the volumes and people people oh, well, of course, know, acquiring of course. positions or, or or you know kind of cashing in on gains. Also, the fact that they're still relatively small in terms of market cap and relatively low in volume may, means that any market maker can make one move and and really you know move a stock. And I've seen a lot of that, right? Of, of companies being heavily shorted by 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 a fund and and 
and really, you know, one one or two investors being able to determine the fate of the entire company and its investors, like its retail investors, is not uncommon in cannabis. Right, right. Well, it's just interesting, right? Especially because some of these companies are doing deals together, and one of them's up, and one of them is is definitely the opposite. Um, yeah. Then Cal mentions high tide is up today. Actually, yeah, that is true, and and it's because they for, uh, filed their form forty F for uh, the Nasdaq listing with the SEC. Great move for them, I think. Yeah, another one to keep an eye on. I really like to see more and more companies, you know, from the cannabis space getting into the Nasdaq and the New York Stock Exchange. It seems the Nasdaq has become particularly friendly, you know, and and open to to listing cannabis stocks, as long as they're not touching the plant in the US, right? That right. continues to be their mandate. But they were but they were playing around for a little bit. I remember, you know, three, four years ago asking them, hey, are you ready to list cannabis stocks? And they were not quite ready. Now they come to come to terms. And of course we did see like some listings a couple three years ago maybe even like you know occur now or, or Green Lane. But but they were mostly staying away from all these companies touching the plant. And now right. they're right. listing them. And we're seeing a lot of companies transition toward the NASDAQ as well, right? We saw Aurora and Afria, you know, from, from go from the New York Stock Exchange to the NASDAQ, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that is somewhat related to the fact that it's like a younger exchange, right? So many of the retail investors investing in cannabis skew a little bit younger. I don't know, just a random hypothesis, to be honest. <laughs> no, no, I think that's very valid. You're asking about uh, Akerna earnings. I just want to see what the exact timing of that is. Yep. So it's it's slated for today. I haven't seen anything come out yet. Javi, have you? Not yet, but they should no. be out. Akerna news. Yeah, I haven't seen it yet. Great company. Jessica no, Billingsley is the CEO there. Um, yeah, I don't know. Beat Street Music, the the comment, just to take us back to why potentially we're looking at um, a bunch of stocks being down today, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I like to think that the administration has to, they're kind of in between a rock and a hard place, it seems, right? They, they're, they, they're quite moderate in terms of what they have to portray, even if they, uh, they're trying to push through a, a certain agenda, right? Now, we know given especially mm -hmm. that video that you posted earlier today, Javi, of Cory Booker and uh, Chuck Schumer and uh, who was it, Ron Wyden. Yeah, talking just about the, there's just like tension, right, in, in the federal government and, and especially among Democrats, you know, like will they deliver on all these promises to relax cannabis laws and, and decriminalize and expunge records or not? And I don't know, like, you know, because lawmakers are signaling that they, you know, they're interested in doing this, that there's interest in the government, but then the executive branch is saying something completely different, or at the very least signaling something completely different. And by the way, if you ask me, is this a good time to be really like firing White House, White House staffers for cannabis use? And I'm not saying like they should or shouldn't, of course they shouldn't. But there are extremely more, like extremely more urgent priorities, yeah, to deal yeah. with right now. Like you just, told, you know, someone chose those staffers, right? They took the time to hire them and to train them. They're now being fired, and someone has to spend time finding and training new staffers in the well, middle they're, they're, of the largest healthcare crisis America has had in a hundred years. Well, let's let <laughs> let's see what other shoe is about to drop. I and who knows. I'm not prognosticating, but I would say there must be some reason, right? Other than just there was marijuana use, right? right. There, mm -hmm. uh, maybe there was some sort of past indiscretions. Maybe they were doing it somewhere they shouldn't have been doing it. Who knows, right? We don't know the full ins and outs of that, but I agree with you. I think the signaling that's happening, obviously we talk about that a lot in our, our political climate here in the US. Um, it, it, yeah, who knows? Who knows what exactly they're trying to say? But right now, we know it's not a great positive message, yeah. right? So, so I, I, I want to answer a few questions and, and you know, kind of weave in some news here. 
Uh, for Mochi, you ask us if we look into OTC uh, stocks, of course. Now we're getting into truly one second. Before that, Benjamin is asking, what's the safest ETF to invest $150,000? That's a lot of money. Uh, we cannot provide financial advice. Here are the, the, the ETFs I think are cool. Uh, there's MJ. They're all New York Stock Exchange traded on the and New York Stock Exchange ARCA, of course. So we have MJ. YOLO, that's Y-O-L-O, M-S-O-S, then T-H-C-X, and C-M-B-S. C-M-B-S is run by our good friend Tim Seymour from CNBC. T-H-C-X is, uh, you know, we, we have John and Jerry and another friend of the house involved in the, in the, in the ETF. But this is not to say that, that, that MSOs, YOLO, and MJ are not great. MJ is the largest, you know, by by market cap, followed by MSOs. They're both issued by the same ETF issuer called ETFMG. Uh, Jason Wilson does a great job there. Um, but you know, check out performances. Uh, I've seen CMBS perform particularly well recently. Right. They have a very active, like they have an active approach, uh, whereas MJ or MSOs uh, are tied to indices. And then there are strategies in between for the other. Um, ETFs, but you know, take a look at those five once again. Also, MSO, re yes. remember to look at what's actively or passively managed, right? That's that's something. I mean, you you hear um, yeah Tim and, Seymour and talk about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, there's no right answer, right, for active or passive management. I've asked a million people, and they go like, "Well, I mean, you know, active management is more expensive in terms of fees and, and expenses for the fund. At the same time, it allows you to respond better." But at the same time, you know, performance is, is it doesn't always go hand in hand with active management. So, you know, there, it's not inherently good or bad. Just look at who's managing and what their track record has been so far. Right. 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 Now, Javier, I think you were going to talk yeah. true leave. Yeah. Just jumping into true leave, you know, they were asking, uh, do we do we look at uh, OTC traded stocks? Well, true leave cannabis corporation trades on the OTC QX. The ticker is TCNNF, TCNNF. This company was very, 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 very hyper-focused in Florida, massive operator in Florida. They were, you know, one of these single state operators. Guess what? They just got into West Virginia. What's up with that? They acquired yep. Mountaineer Holdings for about $6 million. It's um, a cultivation permit and two dispensaries. Uh, and it didn't they also the just get... did not like it, you know, because one of the things that that truly was, was doing awesomely was focusing on one market. I I am a, 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 you know, a believer that it was time for them to expand beyond Florida. You know, their footprint is massive. But the response of the market, you know, suggests otherwise. I don't know. I love truly. I love yeah, the no, CEO. Great, great company. I love her great you know, company. strategy and every one of her partners and investors love her, you know, like just partners love to leave as well and that says a lot right because when there's money involved it's easier for us to say i love truly right you know we just cover them yep. you know we, we we look at what they do partners there's money involved you know you gotta love someone you're you're making business with and can make you win or lose money <laughs> yeah of course well and and truly is one of those companies i think i said this in the first one of these shows that we did you know there's going to be a handful of of what you, you might call a winner in this space, right? Um, and I think we can see who those people are, whether it's a Canopy in in Canada or uh, an Afria Tilray or in the US, if it's Trulieve or Curaleaf or GTI or, or any of those companies, right? There's gonna be a handful of companies that do very, very well out of all of this. Every time I see their stock down, just my own personal choice, I jump in, right? I go and grab another share or so, right? And I have to, I have to, just because I see it and I'm like, man, it's a perfect opportunity. And obviously be careful, do your due diligence, make sure that you're, if you're buying the dip, you, you, you're you reading the news, you're looking at the financials, but but a company of true leave status in this industry and their footprint, they're, you know, it's like a gift. Seeing like, thank you, Kim, for, I, I don't know, for doing whatever happened to make the stock go down and now, you know, we'll, we'll see something, I'm sure, in the next day or two where it skyrockets again. But yeah, a phenomenal company. I have an exclusive, by the way. This is, you know, breaking news. You can find oh. it on Benzinga.com slash cannabis. Privately, you know, private um, news. But 
Uh, our good friends at Mazakali have partnered up with Satori Investment Partners to form a strategic alliance with the intention of investing up, up to $20 million into cannabis related businesses. So if you're looking for funding, go to com slash cannabis, they will cut checks between half a million and $5 million. They are looking for expedient, experient management teams, exemplary record keeping, positive cash flows, or a clear path to profitability, and companies operating in ma markets with healthy supply and demand traits. So check it out, benzinga.com slash cannabis for more information. Exclusive, you heard it here first. Very cool. 20 million bucks. That's awesome. 20 million. It could fund as, as many as 40 companies or as you know, little as four. You know, yeah. depending on the checks they cut, but no, that's cool. I, I love Sumit and the guys over at Mazakali. They're very, very smart guys. Um, oh, Elliot, I'm sorry. Hexo is toying with his emotions. I know. I get it. I get it. <laughs> Hexo is a great company. Um, so Javier, if you had to see uh, of all the Canadians right now, especially with the recent investments into, let's say, Organogram, okay. OGI. Or the news out of um, Kronos Group, right? And and what's happening with the – they've got Kristen Bell's Happy Dance brand and throwing that into the oh, Ulta stores. I love stores. Kristen Bell, too. Like that, that's, love that's Kristen Bell? Brand. And Kronos is great, dude. I don't know. And it, um, I always admired how young their CEO is, Mike. He is – one smart cookie, right? He he started running this company when was he was like what twenty four and managed to grow it incredibly exponentially. I don't know. There's something about it that just makes me feel bullish always. <laughs> yeah, no. But what was your question? Sorry. No, no. So the, of the Canadians right now, I mean, who do you who who do you have your eyes on? If there's if there's uh, if a handful of winners again, maybe pick no more than two or three right now. Mm -hmm. Um. But who do you who do you say is leading the charge for Canada? I mean, for, for the big ones, I really like you know the potential of a free at Tilray you know when they merge. Sure. Um, Aurora is always a good pick for me as well. Um, th those are the larger players, right? So it's like those are easy picks. Mm, you know, High Tide is a cool one to be honest as well. You know, the, the, we are talking about their their Nasdaq listing um, probably sometime in the next couple of months. Cool one to, you know, keep an eye on. Could be up if, if they, you know, get into the NASDAQ. I think that could give them an, a nice little bump. Sure. But what about the mid-tier then? Like let's, or a mid-tier might not even be a fair representation, but your your Hexo, your Organogram, your Kronos Group, your Village Farms, you know, um, some strong, strong I mean, yeah. companies. Yeah, Village is a great one. I know you love it. Uh, I, I do, know I do. I do like Hexo. I do like Kronos. Of course, always um, uh, uh, CGC, right? Canopy is 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 a very interesting bet. Uh, going back to the big ones, um, I mean, those are, are kind of the ones I'm looking at. Namaste. Uh, yeah, yeah. And the Supreme Cannabis Company. Oh, Emerald. That's that's one I really like. Emerald Health Therapeutics. They have a billion verticals and different companies within the company, and it's. Like they have an interesting business model and they know what they're doing. And every one of their, their you know, the, the companies under the, the parent umbrella is really well run. Um, before we, know, we close the day ahead. today, you know, Grow Generation, just because we've been bringing it up so much, NASDAQ, GRGW, Grooge, as I call it, uh, another acquisition, eighth acquisition in 2021. Uh, they acquired a wholesale agricultural platform called Argon.io. They did not disclose the price. That has become a little bit of a uh, of a tendency. Last week they announced three acquisitions. They didn't disclose the price. Uh, my question is why? I really like to know what how much companies pay for for acquisitions. Right? Makes uh, me the, the ticker makes is... me feel if not that that the acquisition was either too small or they overpaid for the company. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. It's the ticker, I believe, is GRWG. Is it not? GRWG. GRWG. Okay, Ooh. just making sure. Thank you, Aaron, yeah. for correcting that. Um, I don't know. I don't know if they overpaid or not, but I, I will tell you this: they're constantly acquiring businesses. They're expanding their footprint. Again, we talked about that to begin the show today. Um, you can do a footprint in this in this industry and execute it a number of different ways. These guys have absolutely destroyed it. 
Um, if you don't mind, though, I want to end with one stock that I don't think we talk enough about. They have earnings. Sundial? They, <laughs> oh, God almighty. Um, so that's SNDL Sundial for those of you who haven't, I don't know, opened a computer ever in your life because they're everywhere. Um, no, which one was it? This, the stock that I'm interested in and that I think they have earnings tomorrow is Terrasen. So you've got uh, TRSSF, Terrasen. Um, a crazy, crazy good company. Um, under the radar, they've been under the radar for a long time. Right, but you've got Jason Wild, you've got Tim Seymour, you've got relationships with other major, major companies uh, in the space. It doesn't Canopy own like, or or yes. have? Yes. Yeah, what, yeah. What's yeah. the deal with Canopy in that? Yeah, in that they had a stake, and I mean, it's I think it's Canopy Rivers, the investment arm. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay. And into Terrascent. Here is my one concern, right? And and I think it's shared by analysts. New York might go wreck anytime and and then implementation could be fast. If New York beats Jersey to the punch, Terrasen only has operations in Jersey in that region. So they could be they could they wouldn't be the largest beneficiaries of it. On the other hand, if New York fails to legalize, they stand to, to reap enormous benefits from being a major player in in the in the um in the region right and, and mm-hmm. generally northeast and and New England and they could be receiving a lot of tourism and a lot of people buying right yeah no it's interesting I don't know and who knows New York I feel like they've been hinting at it all year I, I've heard what, about what New I York going is, legal if you like Terrasend or you want to play a New Jersey play, just hedge your bet with with one of the good, you know, someone who's well positioned in New York. And again, Benzinga.com slash cannabis, you'll find a report by Cantor Fitzgerald, Pablo Swanich. We quote him very often, and he breaks down which are good plays for New York and for Jersey, you know, in, in different situations. Cool. Well, that's a good note to end on, my friend. <laughs> we have After Hours with Ryan up next. Oh, after hours. That sounds yeah. very classy. That's correct. We're, we're classy place, guys. Oh, <laughs> classy, classy. All right, guys, smash the like button. Let's go. Let's go. Smash that like. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy yourselves, everyone. And and I'll I give you the gift tomorrow of Spencer Israel. Classy. <laughs> yes, please. What do. do you think of that? Check mark from me. <laughs> Spence, you're the man. Thanks Hop for having in. us, pal. Javier and Patrick. Thank you very much. All right. All right. After hours of